Okay, welcome to this computer science course. The first chapter is information representation. And this, the learning objectives are these. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to show understanding of binary magnitudes and the difference between binary prefixes and decimal prefixes. That is, uh, binary prefix kibi, kibi bytes and decimal prefixes kilobytes. Just, an, just a taste of what you're going to learn. Prefix is something in front. Suffix is the one that is afterwards. So prefix, kilograms. Something like that. Kilo, right? That is decimal. Kibi is a new one that you're going to learn. That's a binary prefix. And there you get 2 to the power instead of 10 to the power, right? the column values. So understanding of the basis of different number systems. So there are different number systems. What we use is the, the decimal, commonly uh, called decimal system. Um, in the Cambridge, for the Cambridge exams, for that syllabus, they are calling it deanery. So understanding of the basis of different number systems, how they are based, right? Basis, but the base, uh, different bases for different systems. Perform binary addition and subtraction. Normally, you know decimal 10 plus 15, you know how to add. But, but here, binary also, you're going to learn addition and subtraction. Describe practical applications where binary coded decimal it's a new thing, BCD and hexadecimal are used. So understanding of and be able to represent character data in its internal binary form, depending on the character set used. That means when you type a letter A, the letter A in that form known to us will not go into the computer. A different binary character, binary code, Rather, in machine code by o for A and for B another one like by for capital A one code for simple A another code. So understanding of data for a bitmap image are uh, encoded. The images have to be encoded like when you save in a file, create and save a file. They have to be coded. So how are images encoded? There are two types of images. Perform calculations to estimate the file. So how do you calculate the file size after creating a bitmap and you save it? There is a particular size for that file depending on the image. How do you calculate that? We'll learn that. Show understanding of the effects of changing elements of a bitmap image on the image quality and file size. How do you, how do you make changes in the elements of a bitmap? And how the image quality and the file size, they are affected. And also, you will understand how data for a vector graphic are encoded. So that is the other type of graphic. First, Bitmap, then the vector. Justify the use of a bitmap image or a vector graphic for a given task. What does that mean? If you select a bitmap, you can select any, either bitmap or vector graphic, but you have to justify means you have to give reasons for using bitmap in preference to vector. Or if you're using vector, then why you are using vector graphic? So understanding of how sound is represented and encoded. So similar to uh, bit, the images, how is the sound encoded? And we'll understand the impact of changing the sampling rate and resolution. So those two are coming under sound encoding, sampling and resolution. So understanding of the need for an examples of the use of compression. What is the need for compression? Compression is making small. File compression is making a file smaller in size. And why do you need to do that? And also give examples. 
lossy and lossless compression through of the methods and justify the use of a method in a given situation. Again, why you use a lossy or lossless? The reason. And all finally, you will understand how a text file, bitmap image, vector graphic and sound file can be compressed. Firstly, we start with number systems. The denary number, so what we know as decimal, called denary, the Cambridge syllabus. Denary. Base is 10. So I have given a summary of, of all the nodes. Base 10. That means 10 digits. If the base is 10, the same number of digits will be there. And we know them as 0 to 9. Then, once you, with one, uh, you start with one uh, digit or one column, this column, you can go up to only 9. There is only one. Only two, only 9, from 0 to 9. So, you can imagine how people would have started counting humans using their fingers. So only 10 is possible, no? That's why digits, digit. Digit has a meaning of like a finger also, right? Then there's 10. So the first column or the first time you use the finger, you can go only up to zero to nine and the 10 fingers are finished. Then you need columns, more columns. So when you go on to the other one, 10 to the power 1, which has a value of 10, higher value than this. Then the third column is 10 to the power 2, which is hundreds, higher than this. So at this point, you will see, I will show you a video, which will tell you how humans would have most probably started using the decimal counting system. Let's have a look at this video, birth of the decimal counting system. This will be your course page, so you will also will be able to look at it or watch either this video or any video or lesson or assignments given in this course page. You will be able to watch and follow any number of times as you want. So let's have a look at this. I am going to tell you how and why humans settled for the decimal counting system and not binary, octal or hexadecimal system. Imagine the days before the counting system was invented. How did people buy or sell things? Firstly, there was no money. Money was of no use if it could not be counted. Then. How did transactions take place? There was a system of exchanging goods which was called barter system. The cobbler would exchange a pair of shoes for a trouser. A farmer would trade in a bag of mangoes for a chair and so on. Now I am going to tell you a probable reason why man needed a counting system. One day the carpenter who gave a chair to the farmer was not satisfied with the quantity of mangoes he got in return. He started thinking of a way to overcome this problem in the future. After some hard thinking and after eliminating many other options, he decided to use his fingers to measure the quantity of mangoes. First, he closed all fingers before starting to count and called it nothing or not. Then he took a mango from the bag and put aside. He opened a finger and called it one. Then opened another finger for another mango and called it two. It went on like that until he used up 
all the fingers to count ten mangoes. Now he faced a new problem. How was he going to keep a count of more than ten mangoes? He thought for a while and realized that if he closed all the fingers, he could start counting another ten. He found it easy to count the ones or the units, but it was difficult to remember how many tens he counted. After some serious thinking, he decided that he would keep a stick by the side of each ten mangoes counted. So one stick and one open finger means one and one, eleven. Two sticks and seven open fingers means twenty-seven. What would happen when he reached ten sticks? Again, after some logical thinking, he took all ten sticks aside, opened up another column by putting one stick to the left of the tens column and putting a circle in place of the tens column. Now it was one stick in the hundreds column, not or zero in the tens column, and all fingers closed in both hands, another knot. It looked like this, one, not, not, or one, zero, zero, which was called hundred. That explains the birth of the decimal counting system. Do you agree with Binary system works. So let's get back to our lesson here. So these are called place value or column value. For each column, there is a value. And the values are uh, determined like this. The first column is 10 to the power 0, which is 1. And that's called 1's column. And the next one is 10 to the power 1, which is 10. And it's called tens column. And the third column is 0 to 10 to the power 2, which is 100. And that's called hundreds column. That's why it's a ones column, tens column, hundreds column. Those are the column values or place value. Now see the place value. Let's see how it happens. If we analyze the number 365, how do we get the, val the values? This is 10 to the power 0, 10 to the power 1, 10 to the power 2. And the values are 100, 10, and 1 here. And you write the number 365. 3 here, 6 there, and 5. And you multiply 100 times. 3. 3 into 100, 300. 6 into 10 is 60. 5 into 1 is 5. And when you add up, you get 365. So what is the value of this 5? Now 5 is greater than 3, you know, generally. Generally speaking, 5 is larger than 3. But 5 here in this column, the value of 5 is 5. See? 5 is 5 because the column value is 1. But here, the 3, which is lower than 5, but when 3 is in this column, it has a value of 300. So it's a place value that is very important when you analyze a number or the column value. Now let's get to binary numbers. Another system which is used by computers. Base, two. Then how many digits? Two. What are they? So here the values, the place value or the column value are first one is two to the power zero which is one. Next two to the power one which is two. 2 to the power 2 is 4. So these are the values. 1, 8, 16, 32. You have to know these by heart. Memorize it. Like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 
Taiwan then 12, 2024, 2048, 2096, 8192, 16,000. Likewise, you have to double it, going doubling. What is a bit? A digit in the binary number system written using either of the symbols, either 0, 1, 0 and 1. Only those two symbols or the digits are used. And how the word came, bit, binary digit, binary digit. Right? It's not the initials like normally you get, but this is from these two words came bit. And what is a byte? A group of eight bits treated as a single unit. Like you have uh, in the alphabet, single characters. But when you make a group of single characters into a word, so similarly here, the eight bits make up one byte. Now let's do a similar exercise like earlier to analyze this number. So similarly like this, we have to get all the uh, column values to of 0, 1, 2, up to 7. And then now number, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, not 5, 1, 0, 1, then 0, 1, and 1, 1, 0, 1. So this is the same number which is written. Then we put the values. Where there is 1, you multiply 128. There is 0, so it's 0 into 64 is 0. 32, nothing here. 8, 4, nothing there. And 1. So when you add up all these values, you get 173. Now this one. All ones, 8 ones. Convert into denary. So as usual, this 1 to 128, the sequence is there. And then you put all ones there. And then 128, all the values are present. When you add up, you get 255. Then we come to hexadecimal. Another system, which is the base is 16. Hex, as you know, is 16. Like a pentagon, hexagon. That's it. That's all. Six. Hex is 16 and decimal is 10. So 6 and 10, 16. So the base is 16. Therefore, a rule, 16 digits. Like a man with 15 fingers. And similarly, the earlier one binary and with two fingers. If you want to count, start counting. Here what happens is 0 to 9. Okay, here's another question. Also, you will find that we'll be asking questions for you to answer because it's very important that you learn how to answer logically. Right? So here it's a question for you. A big Indian and a little Indian are walking down a path. The little Indian. And who is the big Indian? So if you know the answer, post the answer in SLS or SLOS programmers. There's a WhatsApp group to see if your answer is correct. If you are not a member yet, please send an email to admin at sriLankaonlineschool.com to join the group. That there is, this group is very useful where you can have a share with the other students, your problem as well as answering others' questions. So try to give the answer and then get it going. This is the file that I'll be using for notes, like you want to show some example or something. Yes. So same way, now I'm going to ask another question. In this you have the digits. Zero is a digit, one is a digit, two is a digit. This is the decimal binary system. 
Three is a digit, five is a digit, seven is a digit, eight is a digit, all these are digits, single digits. Nine is a digit, but 10. If you type 10 here, 10 is not a digit. I'm saying 10 is not a digit. Then what is it? What is 10? 10 is not a digit. This is a digit. Seven is a digit. Eight is a digit. Nine is a digit. But 10 is not a digit. Then what is it? Yeah, you can pause this video and then try to think of the answer. Then after a little while, if you can get the answer or if you cannot get the answer, then you will replay this and find the answer. The answer is 7 is a digit, 8 is a digit, 9 is a digit, 10 is not a digit, it is 2 digits. See? How easy, but you never think like that. So we have to get used to thinking that in that pattern. So in this hexadecimal, what happens? 0 to 9, you can borrow from the DNA system. But afterwards, can you use 10? Because also another thing, the highest digit is in this 15. How do you, how do you know? How do you determine that? Let's take it. Very easy. The unknown system like the binary and the hexadecimal, octal or any system, you can understand by comparing it to the known one. Known one is the DNA system. What is the highest digit possible in DNA? Listen carefully to the question. What is the highest digit? Or what is the highest value in one's column? The highest digit out of the 10 digits is 9. So, 10 minus 1. The base minus 1. When you go to binary, the highest is 1. That is, base is 2, 2 minus 1. Therefore, hexadecimal, the base is 16. Then the highest digit is 15. 1 minus 16 minus 1. If you know these patterns, you don't have to calculate and waste time. You know that the exam, you can't use the calculator. Not only for examples, I'm giving you shortcuts so that you can save time at the exam. But since 10 is not a digit, it's two digits, we had to uh, invent digits, new digits. So we took A for 10, B for 11, C 12, D 13, E 14, and F 15. And the column values of oh, base, no? Always this is the base. Yeah. At the beginning, the column values, base to the power zero. Base to the power, that is 10 to the power zero, 10 to the power one. And in binary, base is two, two to the power zero. So naturally, in hexadecimal, base is 16. So column values are 16 to the power. So 16 to the power zero is one. 16 to the power one, 60. To the power 2 is 256. You have to improve your arithmetic, the calculation, the 16 tables. Different systems. Binary. Base is 2. Anyway, any counting system, you start with 0. Next one is 1. We have reached the highest number here. In binary, if there are two fingers. We use 0 and 1, and we have finished the two fingers. Then we have to Open up another finger. So close this finger, it becomes zero and put a stick by the side, as you saw in the video. One zero. How do we connect this to the known one, deanery? The deanery, you go up from zero up to the nine, the max, maximum possible in one digit, nine. Then we have to close the fingers. 
all 10 fingers and then open up another one, another column this side. Same thing happens here. We have finished the two fingers, close the two fingers again to make it zero and then put a stick on this side, so one zero. Then again, one, one. Then we add one to this, one, one. And the next one is, Again, you add starting from right side, when you add one. You know, count that's from the right side. So one plus one is what happened? You have reached the max. So you have to again close, and that means it's zero. And here, carry, you know, you have to add one to this one. The carry. Then what happened? That one and one also becomes zero. One zero rather. Well, it reaches one. The next number, when you add one, it will become one zero. Here also, this carried from here goes to this, and one plus one is one zero. And another column, this one is carried to the other column. Right? Likewise, now again, what happens? One zero one. Like hundred plus one is hundred and one. Of course, this is not 100. I just for comparison purposes, I said there are no numbers for binary. This is 100 zero zero, and this is 101. One. Then what happens? Next number. 110. Have a good look and see whether you understand. Then 111. One, one. Then what happens? All three. All three full, then you have to open up another column. That is one zero zero zero. These three, like nine after nine hundred ninety-nine, it's one thousand, something like that. One 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 is like nine 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 in binary. Again, starting one zero zero one, then one zero one zero. One zero one one. See the pattern. Also, another pattern you have to notice here. The first, the, the ones column in this, the ones column is always zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one. If this column is one, the next column is zero. So that is also one way of checking whether your answer is correct. And also, these don't change until. The, pre the previous one changes. Until the previous one changes, this one will not change. So safely we can put this as one. And the next one changes because the previous two change. So then that's it. Again, sorry, again this. Yeah. This. Uh, one and one won't change. So you can easily put one and one. This also doesn't change, only this changes. Next one, since this first one changes, the second bit also changes, but the other two remain the same. One, zero. Okay. One, 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 one. Then what happens? All four to be zeros and another new column to be taken. on this one zero zero one okay. these two no change but the ne next one changes because the previous two become zero again and the first one changes now the first two Will change again the first one only changes then three columns the three ones change to zero so the previous the the one before that also changes then only the first bit changes one one zero zero one then the second one also changes zero one zero 
on zero. Yeah. Again, the first bit only changes. Now two bits change. One one becomes zero, so the third one also changes. Now again, the first bit. Now the second bit. And now again, only the first bit, and all become ones. Then you know what happens next? A new column and all those four. Yeah. Five ones. six, sixteen. Oh, let's, let's take base eight first. Base eight is what you call octal. Six, eight, like octagon, octopus, octopus, eight tentacles, like that. Starting with zero as usual and going up to one because base minus one, eight minus one is the highest digit. Once you reach the highest digit, you have to make it zero and go to not open up a new column there. Then you can go up to one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, again up to one, seven and finish. Then you have to make an uh, add one to the next column two zero. Are you following? You can't pause the video, replay, and then learn. Two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, seven, then one. Three zero. Likewise, it goes on. Three one, three, two. Three, 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 five, three, six, and so on it goes. Three, seven, three, one, two, zero. Okay. Let's take two hexadecimal. As usual, you start with zero and go up to. from the DNA system. Thereafter, you can't put 10 because we are not reached the highest. What's the highest number? 16 minus 1 is 15. So we learned earlier that A is used for 10 and B for 11, C for 12, D for 13, E for 14, F for 15. So we have reached in binary, the equivalent. We have reached the highest. Then what do we do? Close it. Close the 15 fingers and start again after putting one stick by the side, which looks one zero and not 20, remember, uh, not 10. And this is not 20. This is not 17. All these, you have to use the digit names, one zero, one seven, two zero. Same way here. One zero, not ten. Next one is one one. One two, one three, one six, one seven, one eight, one nine. Afterwards, what? One eight. Correct. Very good. One eight. One B. One C, one B, one B, one B. Now what? Now what? Second time also we have reached the highest. Then we add one. I put another stick. That means two, zero. Not twenty. Two, zero. Right. So.
the counting system. Ah, okay. Let's have another one. Quattro decimal. What is that? I never heard. Can call or anything? Maybe we can devise our own system. So, quattro is four. Quattro is four, like penta. Four and ten, fourteen. So the base is fourteen, and the highest digit is thirteen. So you go up to thirteen like this. After nine, as usual, A, B, C, D. D is thirteen. So you have to stop at D and then close the fourteen fingers. Zero and one. So that is easier. I'm zero. Again, go up to one D. After one. After one D, two zero. So that is how that goes. All right. Now it's come to converting between binary and binary numbers. Binary to binary divided by two. You already know about this. Useful way to convert a binary value to its binary equivalent is the procedure of successive division by two with the remainder written down at each stage. The converted number is then given as the set of remainders in reverse order. That is from bottom up. Not this way, but that way, bottom up. So the, this can be illustrated by the conversion of binary 246 to binary. Binary 246 to binary. Write 246 here, divide by 2. How much? 123, 246 divided by 2 is 123. Anything remaining? No, it goes exactly 246. So remainder is 0. Then you take this 123 here again and divide by 2. That goes 61 times 2 is 122. There is a remainder because this 123. Remainder is 1. Divide 61 by 2 is the answer here. Six taken here and divide 30. 2 times 30 is 60. There's remainder. Then 2 times 15 is 30. No remainder because exactly dividing. Then you get 15 here and divide. You get 7 and remainder 1. 7 divided by 2, 3 remainder 1. 3 divided by 2, 1 and remainder 1. And 1 divided by 2. There's no 2s for 1. So you put zero here and one remainder. So the answer, if you take it this way, four ones will come first. One, two, three, four ones. Then zero, one, one, zero. Zero, one, one, zero. That is the answer. So now also you can pause the video and see whether you can calculate any, uh, convert any binary number to binary. Then how do you, and the reverse convert back to denary, a binary number back to denary. Take this 11001. First, you write the column values 2 to the power 0, which is 1, 2 to the power 1 is 2, 4, 8, 16. Then multiply as usual these values 16 into 1, 8 into 1, 4 into 0 is 0, here is a 0, there's 1. 16 plus 18 is 24, 24 plus 1 is 25. You have to be very quick like this, 16 plus 16, 24, and don't say 16 plus 8. When you count, when you count a number, right? 15, 4, 32, 45, 62, 25, like that, when you count, how do you count? 5, 5 plus 4 is 9, 9 plus 2 is 11, 11, 5 is 16, 16 plus 2 is 18, 18 plus 5 is 20. That will take a long time. So what you must do is cut that plus this equals those things. You have to cut down. Cut down everything in your mind also. Just take this number 5. And you know that when 5 plus 4 is 9, don't say plus, five, plus 4 is 9. No, just say 5 here, 9, 11, 16, 18, 
23. Then 2 is carried. You take this 2 plus 1. You don't say 2 plus 1. So you say 2, 3, 5, 8, 12, 12 uh, 18, 20. Okay, so that's the way you must do. So 16, 24, 25. Conversions for hexadecimal numbers. Denary to hexadecimal. Oh, divide by this. Here in the, in the binary. Denary to binary. We divide it by 2. That is a base. So same way, hexadecimal. Even if this book doesn't say, even if my note doesn't say 16, you should be able to... Uh, Conclude, you have to decide. You can come to that conclusion that, ah, okay, this must be 16, I'm sure. That's the way. It will progress. You learn. On your own, you can learn. So divide by 16 and remainders in reverse order. So I'm going to do it because you know the normal division in the remainders, you know it. So the, the other way around is hexadecimal to binary. Imagine 7BF. The As usual, you have to put the column values like what we did earlier. Uh, the binary. We did column values 2 to the power. Here, 16 to the power for hexadecimal. So 16 to the power 0 is 1. 16 to the power 1 is 16. 16 to the power 2 is 256. And 7BF, 7, 7 here, B there, F there. 7 into 256. 1,792. Uh, 16 into B is how much? 11. B is 11. The value, binary value. So 11 into 16, 176. Uh, you know that these are binary calculations. So we are doing, when you are converting, we are doing in binary. 7 times 256 is binary calculation. So here also, you have to make this 11. The binary equivalent and then multiply. Here it's it's uh, 15. F is 15. So 15 into 1 is 15. And when you add up, you get this number. <clears throat> Converting between binary cuts like between binary, convert to something and then convert to another. No, no, it's not that. Very easy. Bring to hex, you just write the binary number here. If this is the binary number. Take four bits. Four bits apart from the right side, remember? From the right side. Because uh, if you take from the left side, if there are more than eight, if there are nine or eleven, then this value will be different. But if you take from the right side, divide them into four bits each. Then if there is another bit here, doesn't matter. The value doesn't change. So this, the first four bits is value zero here. No, sorry. Uh, the column values are one, two, four, and eight. So the value of this one is eight. The value of this one is 4. So 8 plus 4 is 12. And 12 in hexadecimal is C. 1, 0, 1, 1 is the value of this is 8. This is 2. This is 1. So 8 plus 2 plus 1 is 11. 11 in hexadecimal is B. So what is this group of 4 bits called? Group of 8 bits is called by it. You know that. So Group of four bits is half a byte. And the name given to that is a nibble. Nibble. So one nibble needed to represent one hexadecimal digit. And hex to bin, the other way around. Reverse of it. If it is B9, what? B, the value of B is in binary, it's 11. So in uh, binary, 8 plus 2 plus 1 is 11. This is how you write in binary. So that nibble is for B, 1, 0, 1, 1. And for 9, 8 plus 1 is 9. So that's the second a nibble for the second digit. You don't say bits in uh, 
uh, hexal is one. The C is not a bit. B is not a bit. They are digits. Your bit is binary digit. So only for binary, you can use the word bit. Then what do you use hexadecimal for? The usage, usage of hexadecimal. A memory dump could be provided which has a hexadecimal representation of the content of some chosen part of the memory. That, uh, like, if now I'm not giving you how to get this because uh, I'm not quite sure whether this is 100% safe. Is anyway, the dump is given like this. The the position or the, the situation in the memory, the condition of the memory at that time, if a program crashes or something, if when the programmer wants, if when you complain, the programmer will ask for a memory dump. What is, uh, what was there at that time? Then the programmer can go through this, each you know, address and the values. These are hexadecimal values. And then find out what happened, what was the cause of the error, and then you can correct. Well, for that, hexadecimal is used. Then choose also to represent MAC address. MAC address is a physical address which doesn't change. Even if you go abroad, take your PC abroad even, it will not change unlike the IP address. IP address can change even at home from time to time. Uh, you will learn later about dynamic IP addresses and static IP addresses. But this is physical. Yeah, it's given physical address. You can find out by on your computer, go to command prompt and uh, issue this command IP config all. You will get this screen. So that is one. First one is uh, memory dump. Second one is MAC address. Then to represent IPv6 addresses. Uh, IPv6, IPv4 only we are using now at the moment. Uh, like uh, example is uh, like You may have seen IP addresses like this. These are the IPv4 address. Then for IPv6 address, IPv6 address, the top one. You have six set of uh, numbers using uh, hexadecimal digits. Right? Sorry, uh, eight, uh, not six, eight. Eight set of a set of numbers, set of eight now, right? That's a format for IPv6 address. So for that also use decimal, hexadecimal. To create another use is to create colors in HTML web pages. This is a command you can use, one of the commands that you can use to show the colors. This is red. I will explain to you that, how you can get it. Here is a This has a source of you can you can check the source code of any web page like this. Right mouse click on web source. Is this? Hmm? I will show you a new one. A new how do you do a web page? Take an notepad or any text processing window document. When it opens, you type your commands, HTML commands. HTML is hypertext markup language and they are tags. They are all marked, marked like this. Markup, that's why it's called markup. And you mentioned that HTML is HTML. And uh, every opening one should be close like this with a slash in front. Then the body, which will show whatever on the screen that it shows will be this. To close. And in between, in, inside the body, whatever that you type. This is my first web page. Some of you may have done web pages first, but I'm just doing this 
is a general thing or or generally uh, any programming language or any first thing you say hello world no? hello Or br there is no opening or closing that just because you don't have to open and close it is my first web page if it is our first web page otherwise you can create this is my hundredth web page or something then you save it you have to know you have to remember where you save I'll just put it just up for the moment. And uh, wait. That very important thing. Don't press enter until you press HTML. Dot HTML. This is very important. Otherwise, it will not be saved as a web page. Save it and you check the here web page. The world, and this is my first web page. Now let's do a little bit of change to show color. Learning now why, where hexadecimal is used. So you can see, I can give the background color of the whole web page by this body. BG color equals, it's a uh, green. It's not accessible. Without accessible, I'm giving a color by the name of the color, but that is limited. All right, so I'll save this and uh, reload, reload this page. That yeah, came green. And if you can say yellow. Wrong spellings. Save and reload. There you are. Now, still we didn't know, we don't know how to use the hexadecimal path. So let's show this. Use the hash, hash symbol. Then there are two, three colors RGB. RGB. For these two, you have to replace with hexadecimal values. And in hexadecimal values, you know that FF, F is the highest digit, highest value for one digit. And there are two digits here, two hexadecimal digits. That means two nibbles and one byte or one byte. So here, if I give FF, that will be the max, no? Maximum for uh, red. This is red. I am replacing red with the value. G, for green, just put zero, zero, and blue also zero, zero. What will happen? Save it and reload. It became red. Now we do, let's give the green. So zero, zero for red, FF for green, F zero, zero for blue. Save it, reload, green. And finally, blue. FF for blue, save, reload, blue. What if we mix up like this? Green and blue, max. Cyan, or cyan. And instead of that, red and blue, same. In the or in the or something color, some color I can't remember. So likewise, you can turn by not only FF, you can give value like one, eight, A, D, one or D. Like that you can give hexadecimal value. 
see uh, many shades. In fact, you can get up to 16 million colors or shades because each one, this byte, there for red, there are 256 values. For green, there are 256 values because FF is 256. One byte, you know, one byte has a value of uh, total number of values of 256. So 256 into 256 into 256 will give you 16 million plus colors. Right? That is another application where you create colors in HTML web pages. And another one, in charts that define character codes. Example is ASCII chart. We will be learning this later. ASCII character code that I told you briefly earlier, when you type A, it doesn't go as A into the computer, but it goes as a code. And the codes are given or all have come to an agreement called ASCII, ASCII chart. ASCII is American Standard Code for Information Interchange. All the computers should follow this method. For example, A, capital A is binary 65. The binary value of binary 65 is given for capital A. Simple A, 97. So how many usages? One is memory dump, called memory dump, MAC addresses, IPv6 addresses, create colors in HTML and to use in character codes. This task for you, convert each of the binary numbers 96, 215, and 374 into hexadecimal numbers. Convert each of the hexadecimal numbers V4, FF, and 3A, 2C to binary numbers. Where do you submit them? I will show you. Here under information representation. Task 1.01. Activity, activity 1.2, task 1.02. There's a whole lot of things to do. Well, well you are doing the exam, not myself. So I will do this and show you, but that is not the point. You have to do, don't miss a single one of them. I'm repeating, don't miss any of these things. You better do this. This you will see. A quiz will come like this. Convert the accessible number FF into binary. You give the answer here. And then there are, in this case, there are six numbers. And you finish attempt. You click finish attempt. It will come like this. Yeah, of course, not yet answered. But when you answer, it will say answered. And either return to attempt or submit all and finish. Then again, you have to submit all and finish. Then it will give you uh, results yeah. zero because all are wrong. This red is wrong because I didn't answer it, and the correct answer is also given. So you can learn if there's a mistake, why is it wrong? Okay. I hope you will enjoy this doing these uh, quizzes. I know children like quizzes. Just normal exercises. Mm. Right back to the lesson. Yeah. Then, so here are the, the task 1.01. You have to go and submit and get the results yourself. 1.02 numbers and quantities. A number expressed in exponential notation. That is, like this, minus 3.6 into 10.8 or 4.2 into 10 to the power, 10 to the power minus 9. This is minus 3.6 into 10 to the power 8. 10 to the power minus 9. Anything is okay. Using, using exponents, she has said. The value can be positive or negative. And the exponent can be positive or negative. You saw it here. Then 
example, give one, uh, one million two hundred fifty thousand bytes in exponential notation. So what do you do? You bring this decimal point this way and make it smaller. Or here I have taken three places decimal one, two, three, and up to this point thousand two hundred fifty into 10 to the power 3. How is 10 to the power 3? Because each, for each 0, you uh, multiply by 10 to the power 1. So here, 3 zeros, 10 to the power 3. And if you take 1.250, that means another 3 you have brought here. So 10 to the power 6. And this is the best way to represent big numbers. One byte equals 8 bits. Now we are learning the decimal prefix and the binary prefix. You know that one byte equals eight bits. After that, how do you, this is same in both, one byte equals eight bits. After that, it changes, the prefix changes according to decimal and they are denary and binary. So here, this is the decimal prefix name, it's kilo. Symbol is K and the factor 10 to the power 3. And step, each step is 10 to the power 3. We are going down. That's why you get 10 to the power 3, 10 to the power 6, 9, 12. Each step is 10 to the power 3. So to go to mega, it is bytes, megabytes. 10 to the power 6 bytes. For kilo, 10 to the power 3 bytes. That is 1000. Mega is 1 million. Giga is 1 billion and Terra is uh, trillion. Right? Then this, that's a decimal prefix, a prefix to define the magnitude of a value. Examples are kilo, mega, giga, and Terra, representing factors of 10 to the power 3, 6, 9, and 12, respectively. For the binary prefix, it's called kibi. The name is kibi, not kilo. Kb and the symbol is Ki and the factor is 2 to the power 10. There we saw is that 10 to the power 3. Here is 2 to the power 10, which is 1024. And each step is 2 to the power 10. Here, yeah. going down this way, we have to multiply by 2 to the power 10. So Kb, you have 2 to the power 10 or 1024 bytes for the maybe. 2 to the power 10 into 2 to the power 10 or 2024 into 2024. Okay. Then uh, Gibi is 2 to the power 30 and Tebi is 2 to the power 40. The names are like this Gibi and Gibi, right? G I, maybe and Tebi. So alternating every other one, A B. But the prefixes are always A I, the I, the letter, second letter is I. Here the second letter, uh, Kibi and Gibi is I, Mebi and Tebi is E. Pronunciation also, Kibi bytes, Mebi bytes, Kibi, Tebi, Tebi. But the symbol always I, remember that. So the binary prefix, a prefix to define the magnitude of a value. Examples are Kibi, Mebi, Gibi, and TB, representing factors of 2 to the power 10, 20, 30, and 40, respectively. Magnitude is the size. Exponent is a number written above and to the right of the base. That is this. this 10 is the exponent, and this is the base, 2 to the power 10. A number is best represented with either one denary digit or two denary digits before the decimal point. We saw it earlier, like 2.4 or max is 2.57, two, two, uh, sorry, 24.2. If it is 24.2, that is two uh, denary digits in front of the decimal point. Or else, even better, just one, one digit in front of the decimal. So what is the question? How many files of size 2.4 maybe bytes could be stored Maybe bytes could be stored on a four GB byte memory stick. Memory stick. So have a good look at this 
how it happens. First of all, you convert the Gibby byte, the space, the available space into the file size that you need. You have to bring those two. These are different units, maybe bytes and Gibby bytes. You have to bring them into a common one. So rather than taking maybe bytes to Gibby bytes, you always take the Gibby bytes to maybe bytes. Then it's easier. So four, convert four Gibby bytes to uh, maybe bytes is uh, 4 into 1024. Because here you saw each step is 1024 or 2024. In Gibby bytes to maybe bytes, you have to multiply by 1024. So if there are four, four Gibby bytes, then four into 1024 to find capacity available. So that will give you the full, the memory stick full capacity. Then divide the capacity by the file size. So this is it, 4 into 1024 divided by 2, 2.4 is a 6. But remember, you don't have to give the final answers like this. You can give like this. That's also given, marks given for this. Because you are not supposed to take the calculator to the uh, the exam hall. You can't do the calculator. So because of that, this is accepted, marks given like this. Then this is for you. How many? Maybe bytes are uh, there in two GB bytes. See whether you can do it. Yeah, so it's easy. How do you do? Two gigabytes. One gigabyte is how many? Maybe bytes. Let's look at the chart. One GB byte. One GB byte is. 1024, the step is 1024, each step 1024, uh, maybe bytes. So if it is 2 gibby bytes, 2 into 1024. So the answer here is 2 into 1024, maybe bytes. Then we come to what we call internal coding of numbers. Binary addition also. It's given here, like 0 plus 0 is the rules. Huh? 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 equals, is this 10? No, it's 1, 0. And I've given for easy reference, denary is 2. 2 in denary, here 1, 0. And also this will be useful later on in calculation. If 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, then 1, 0 minus 1 should be 1, no? You take this, take this uh, 1 into this side. This side will become 10 minus 1. It's not 10, 1, 0. You take this one here, 1, 0 minus 1. Equals, this is remaining this side, 1. That will be useful. Then 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1, 1. Deanery is three. So here is an example example. One zero one one zero zero is forty-four. How do you know? One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. So you calculate like this: one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Then go backwards. Uh, thirty-two plus there's nothing here in the thirty-two uh, sixteen column. So it's eight. Thirty-two plus eight is forty. Forty plus four is forty-four. That's right. And this is 1, 2, 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. And when you add up, you should get 49. Then see whether you get 49. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 32 plus 16 is 48. 48 plus 1 is 49. Right. And uh, how, how do we do it? Now only I'm showing it. <laughs> 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 1 is Remember, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. So you put 0 here and carry 1. That, that 1 is written here. Carry 1 to the next color. That 1 and this 1 is again 1, 0. So you put 0 here, then carry the other, uh, the carry to the other color. So there's nothing to add. So that carry will come here. And here, no change. 1 plus 0 is 1. And we... Uh, in advance, we knew that this answer is correct, 49. In the binary, these are the rules. 
0 minus 0 equals 0, 1 minus 0 equals 1, 0 minus 1 is minus 1, or the normal way, borrow from next column, that is like 12 minus 7, how do you do? 2 minus 7 first, 2 minus 7, if you can't, Uh, so if you want to deduct, uh, subtract 12 minus 7. Well, you write 12 there, minus 7 here. Uh, what do we do? 2 minus 7, no? To minus seven, you can't. No? You can't subtract seven from two. Then what do you do? You borrow this one to this side. Then this will not become three. You are not just adding one here. You are getting the full column value. That is 10. So 10 plus two is 12. Then you subtract seven from 12. Same way here. This is also useful to remember. When you borrow, it doesn't become one, it becomes one zero. You will know, you will see it in th this way. When you do this subtraction, this is the number, this is the number to subtract. Zero minus one, we can't, huh? we can't deduct one from zero. So you borrow this one to this. From the next column, you borrow one. What happens here? That's what I was explaining. It won't become one. It will be one zero. Because the column value here have to be taken into account. So second column like, we add a column like. So one zero, one zero. This becomes one zero. And one zero minus one is one. That is what I showed you. One zero minus one is one. Then how much is here? It's zero there. Right, it's zero there. So zero minus one, again, you have to borrow. Since there is no one here, you have to borrow one from there. So when you borrow one from here, this becomes one zero. This becomes zero and this becomes one zero. Then what happens? From here, you borrow one to this place, it becomes one zero and this becomes one. From one zero minus one, is one, same as this, one zero minus one is one. Then here, there is one remaining, no? So from one zero, this became one zero and you took one, so here remaining one, one minus one is zero, and here is nothing because we borrowed from, borrowed this initially, so zero minus zero is zero, then there is no change. Here, uh, one minus one is zero. Let's see whether we can, and a sample here. Binary subtraction. Okay. This is a hundred seventy. How is it? One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty two, sixty four. 128. So 128 plus, this is not 60, 64 is 0, this is 32. You can add. 164 plus 32 is 196. 196 plus 8 is uh, 204. Sorry. Uh, let's see. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. 128 plus uh, this is uh, 32. Huh? 128 plus 32 is 160. 132 plus 128 plus 32 is 160. So you must be 
very uh, quick in calculation, mental calculation. For that, I have given, uh, I have given a uh, thing for a quiz for you. I'll show it in a minute. Of course, here, if you start from the top, you will have uh, this one, start engine. Starter, quiz. Duration, 10 minutes. There is a, a total of 100 questions. Times table. So you have to, that will be very thorough. 100 questions are there and the time is running. 6 into 6 is how much? Then uh, 10 into 5 at random it will come. Every time you do, it will be different questions or that. So you do that and uh, automatically you will be graded. All right. Here for the calculation. So that's why I told you that you have to be uh, very fluent in the arithmetic. So 128 plus 64, not 64, 32. 128 plus 32 is 160. 160 plus 868 and 270. So there's 170 and minus how much? Minus how much? 1, 2, 4, H. this is 128 plus 3 is 131. Then, as you did this, then you get the answers. How much? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So, 170 minus 31. Let's see. See what our... Yeah, see? 20 minus... Uh, this is a different one, you know, 135. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 228, 128 plus, this is 7 actually, 1, uh, 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. That also you must be very thorough, 1, 1, 1 is 7. So, 128 plus 7 is 135, and you should get 35 as the answer. Let's see whether you get it. And the way to do it is, first of all, uh, these are the two numbers, no? two for the calculation, these are the two numbers involved. What is in red? That is the working in between steps for you to understand. So first try to, first you ignore this, don't look at this. Zero, uh, this zero minus one. You can't, you can't deduct one from zero. You can't deduct one from zero. So then what do you do? You borrow, no? You borrow from the other one. This column, next column, you borrow one. What happens to this zero? It becomes one zero. Remember, I told you, this becomes one zero. From one zero, you can deduct one, and the answer is one. Then here, what happens? Here, this was zero, no? Earlier. Borrow this one, it goes to that side and makes it one zero. Here it becomes zero. So what do you do then? You can't, this is zero, you can't deduct one from zero. Again, you have the same problem. So try to borrow from here, nothing. Try to borrow from there, yes. So this one, when you take it here, it becomes one zero. This one, when it comes here, it becomes one zero. And from here, you take one, this side, okay? this will be one, and this will become one. Zero will become one zero with this one here. Then one zero minus one is one. And here we are left with one here. One minus one is zero. 
Here, yeah, zero. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. One minus zero is one. Zero minus zero is zero. One minus one is zero. And how much is it? One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Is thirty-two. Thirty-two plus two is thirty-four. Plus one is thirty-five. So that's correct. So that's the way you subtract. And how you borrow is that's the way. Now another small section coding for integers. How are integers represented in the computer? With one byte, if you want only positive only positive numbers only, then you can use all eight bits. Use all eight bits and go up to two hundred fifty five is the highest number. So with zero. Altogether, 256 numbers you can have. If you have two bytes, you can go from 0 to 65,535. You can calculate and see. Uh, with, with one byte, if you need negative and positive only, I mean, I mean, if you want uh, uh, what you call the sign, if you need to know whether it's negative or positive, because here there is no sign in binary. In binary, you don't have any sign bits. Only zeros and one, that's all. So we had to use one of them as a sign. So we use the, the MSP, the most significant bit as a sign. And if it is one, it's negative. If it is zero, it's positive. The eighth bit, the sign. And you have only seven bits for the value. So therefore, 127. If all are ones, it's 127. So this is minus, no? First, first one is one means uh, the other seven are ones. That means minus 127. Two. Zero means plus here, plus 127. Minus 127 to plus 127. So I will show you a shortcut now to calculate values of this column. At once, can you tell the value of this? You can't, no? You be adding one, two, four, and all that. I'll show you a shortcut for that. We, we, I save you a lot of time. If you have one, just one, the value is one, right? You have uh, two ones, this and this. That means two plus one is three. Then if you have three bits, one, two, four, the value of this bit is four. Four plus two plus one is seven. And this eight, four, two, one, fifteen. If it is sixteen, this becomes thirty-one. Is 32, it becomes 63. So likewise it goes, but it's a formula. There is a pattern here. You have to recognize patterns always. Then that is what you call learning. You can learn on your own a lot of things if you recognize pattern. You can recognize. So here is a pattern. 2 plus 1 is the answer here. Here 4 plus 3 is the answer, 7. 8 plus 7 is 15. That is the earlier one here. 8 plus 7. 16 plus 15, the earlier number. 31. 32 plus 31. That's 63. So how do you... Oh, what is that? Now, you can't, if you have like this, it's okay. But all of a sudden, if you say 8 ones or 12 ones, then you can't be doing all this. No? So the formula is you add the, the... You get the value of this and add minus 1. One less than that. That means two plus two minus one. And here four, four plus four minus one, that is three. That is this here. And this is eight plus seven means eight plus eight minus one. This is 16 plus 16 minus one. 32 plus 32 minus one is 31. So then what we have here, you want to know the value of this. How do you do? Just count on 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. 128 plus how much? 1 less than 128. That's 127. 
that is 128 plus 127 is 255. This one, this P2 don't count. So let's take this 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 64 plus how much? 63. That's 127. So thereafter, you don't calculate. If you have something like this, don't do any calculation. Just use that method. And if you want 32, what do you do? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. And all the, all the others are zeros. So. Same way, 64. One more zero than this. And if it is 65, what? Take 64 and add one there, this side. Hmm? Okay. And if, how much is this? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 64 plus, imagine that this is also 1. This is also 1. You use that rule. 64 plus 63 is 127. But this is not 1. So you have to reduce 1. 126. All right. One more thing to remember is this. One, two ones is three in binary. Three ones is seven. Four ones is 15. Five is 31. Like that. You have to remember these things. 15, very essential. Very important to remember. Four ones is 15. Then we are going into a little more, bit more complicated section. Choose complement for signed integers. Remember, there is this is very important. Two's complement is only for negative numbers. Very important. Remember, remember these two colors also. I will, you will find that I will prove that you have forgotten this in a little while. So, how do you do? The first step is one's complement. You take a number and turn it to one's complement before turning it to two's complement. How you do it is each binary digit is individually subtracted from one. Complement means the opposite. Okay. So here, individual each bit to be reduced from one. So you put all ones on top. This is the number to be converted. So you deduct this from one, 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 one. So one minus zero is one. One minus one is zero. One minus zero is one. 1 minus 1 is 0. So it goes on. What happens? What is the result? This number has got inverted. The opposite of this. All the 1s have become zeros, And the zeros have become 1s. Then what happens? 2's complement is you add 1 to 1's complement. So this is the answer here. This 1 is taken there. And added 1. 1 plus 1 is 1. 0. 0 and 1 carried. You put 0 here and 1 is carried. And uh, the others invert. I mean, they're not, sorry, others, nothing. No change. You just add one. One plus one is one zero. So one is carried and one zero. The others, same. You just put it. This is the two's complement of this number. This is the two's complement of this number. All right. So then we go on. This is the definition. One's complement, the binary number obtained by subtracting each digit in a binary na uh, number from one. So the shortcut is what? Just invert it. Any number, if you want to uh, try the convert to one's complement, don't go to do this long cut. One, 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 and all that. This is only for the method how to learn. What you must do is just invert it. This became this one's complement just by inverting all the digits. The two's complement, but uh, but of course, if you are asked to write what is one's complement, then we have to write this definition: binary number obtained by acting each digit in a binary number from one. You remember the shortcut, but write. Remember this also to write, if you're asked to write the definition. Then two's complement, the one's complement of a binary number plus one. 
So here are some questions. Uh, what is the one's complement of this number? Just invert. No? The two ones will become zero zero. The two zeros will become one one. One zero one zero will be zero one zero one. What is the two's complement of this number? So first, you do the conversion, like in the inversion. Zero. This one will become zero. And how many zeros? One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five ones. And this one zero will become zero one. At one. So this is the two's complement of this number. What is the two's complement of denary positive hundred? So first you convert denary to hundred. Denary hundred to binary. That is this. Let's see whether it's correct. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Whenever you get a number like this, always check it whether it's correct. Then your arithmetic will improve. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 64 plus 32 is 96. 96 plus 4 is 100. So that's correct. Then add a 0 in front of this binary value. After converting this into binary, add a 0 here. That's all. Why? What about the ones complement and all that? If you know the answer, you're good. Memory is good. Otherwise, I told you I'll remember these two colors also. And I prove that you forget this. Only for negative numbers. So you don't do any conversions for positive 100. Just the binary conversion. And adding a zero in front. Whose complement of denary negative 78? Convert 78 to binary. Disregarding the minus sign. Just convert 78. So it is correct. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 64 plus 8 is 72. 76, 78. Correct. 78. Then what? Add a 0 in front. We'll put a zero in front of this number. Convert this to its two's complement. So this is the inversion. One, zero, all the, the whole thing is got inverted here. That is one's complement. Then you add one. One plus one is one, zero. One carry, that is here. Zero, zero, then no change, all these things. That is the answer to that. This complement of minus a uh, negative 78. Then what happened? Another one. Yeah. Convert two's complement positive binary number to denary. Now it's the other way around. The number given here is already converted. It's a two's complement positive binary number. Convert it to denary. Right. Ignore the leading zero. Ignore the leading zero. Right. That is positive. Then now convert to denary. Convert to denary. Right. So then 64, 32, 8, 4, and 1. So when you add up, you get the total. 64 and 32 is uh, 96, 96, 104, 108, and 109. That is 109. Positive, huh? positive. Then convert two's complement negative binary number. There's one in front, a negative binary number to denary. So convert to denary. Oh, this is the difference. This last one is minus. The most significant bit is minus 128. All right. So <clears throat> the number is three ones, one, 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 then zero, one, one, zero, one. 
zero one one zero one, and you convert. This is minus 120, this is 64, 32, nothing there, 0, 8, 4, and 1. So under, minus 120 plus 64 plus 32 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1, that is minus 120 plus 109, which is minus 19. So the answer to this is minus 19. Okay. <clears throat> then this is interesting representation of signed integers signed binary number to be represented 7 1 0 1 uh, z minus 0 minus 1 minus 7 minus 8 sign and magnitude representation sign and magnitude representation is the first uh, bit for the sign and the rest is for the size or the uh, value of the number. So if this is zero, that means positive and seven is one, one, one. I told you remember four plus two plus one, 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 one is seven. I'll come to that later, use complement. First we'll do this column. So one is zero for positive and one. Zero, again, zero positive and zero. Minus zero is one, that is for the sign. The first one. This one means negative zero. This one is negative and one. So that is minus one. Minus seven is this negative and one 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 is seven. Minus eight is not represented. Why is that? Because if you put this as negative one, and then with three digits, you can't have eight. You need another bit for eight. No? One zero zero zero. That is why with four bits, it's not given. But of course, you can give. Then you need another bit. But we are handling only four bits here. Then the two's complement representation, the same thing. Why is that? Because that green and purple that rule, no two's complement conversion for positive numbers. So the first three numbers are the same, 0001, 0000, and minus zero is not represented. Same problem there, because I'll tell you how, how this is done. Here is minus 128, sorry, minus uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, minus 8. The fourth digit is minus 8. Next one is plus Four. Next one is as two. Right. So a total of how much? Where this. This is minus 8, this is plus 4, plus 2, or plus 1 is 7 here. 1, 1, 1 is 7. So 7 minus 8 is minus 1. See, minus 1 here. Right. Let's take another one. This is minus 8. Then 0, 0, plus 1. No values for these two. Only this has a value of 1. So that means that is Minus seven, no? Here is minus seven. That's a value needed. So minus eight is this. Minus eight and the others are zeros. It's your turn. Pause the video. Pause the video now and try to fill this up. Try to fill this up and then you replay the video. Replay the video and you we'll, can check whether these answers, your answers are correct. 
you can have any number like you know if it is four not enough i will i will use the minimum number required and there is task 1.03 convert the two's complement number 1011 to the deanery equivalent then do the same for 111011 and convince yourself that you get the same value what does that mean we'll take these two numbers in the worksheet and try 1011. Right. That's a question. Convert the two's complement number. Is already two's complement to the DNA equivalent. So what's a, how do you do it? Take the this is equal to minus eight plus two plus one. Which is equal to how much? Minus eight plus two plus five. Minus five. Minus five. Then you you asked to do this three ones. One 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 zero one one. One 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 zero one one. But but that also and see that's also negative. So uh, minus how much? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Minus 32. Plus, this is 16. Plus 8. Plus 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1. This is 0 here. So you are not adding 4. How much? Well, minus 32 plus you add up these things. 16 plus 8 is 24, 24, 26, and 27. Which is how much? Minus 32 plus 27 is minus 5. So this answer is the same, no? Same as this. So what is the meaning? You can add any number of ones in front. Two's complement, remember, only. Otherwise, the normal binary it will change the value. For two's complement, you can, negative ones, you can add any number of uh, ones in front. Or zeros. Usually, we say, no, add zeros in front and no value change. Yeah. That is because this one will become higher and the others also will be, will offset that. See? Here, Minus 8 plus 2 plus 1. This 2 plus 1 remains the same. But all these ones make up to this one. So the final answer will be the same. And uh, so you see, and convince yourself that you get the same value. So binary arithmetic, you know the additions and the subtraction, the rules. Now what happens here? You add this, 1011 and 1 plus 1110. One, one, what happens? 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 10. Zero. 0 plus 1 is... Sorry. Uh, yeah, 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 10. One, 1 is carried. That one and this one is 10. One, 1 is carried. 1 plus 1 is 10. One, plus 1 is 11. One, one. You put 1 here and then 1 carried. But we have a 4-bit register. Imagine that we are using a memory... A location which has only four bits we are using. Then what happens to this? This is called the overflow error. If binary values were limited to being stored in a nibble, uh, four bits is nibble. <laughs> Excuse me. The result of the addition would be incorrectly stored as 1001 because this is lost. No? Lost. There's no place to keep it. Like spilling 
uh, 250, like uh, pouring 250 milliliters of milk into a mug, which is only 200 milliliters. What happens? That 50 will overflow. That will be lost. You, the, what will remain is only 200 milliliters. So here, incorrectly stored as 1001. The answer should be, now this is uh, 11 and this is uh, uh, 13. Sorry, uh, 14. 8 plus 4 is 12, 12 plus 2 is 14. This is 14, and this is 11, should be 25. 11 plus 14, 25. But what is the answer? 1009 is 9. 8 plus 1 is 9. This is an example of an overflow. The value produced is too large to be stored. There was an exact question like this, so remember this. Overflow. A condition when the result of a calculation is too large to fit into the number of which defined for storing. Remember that? That's yeah. overflow. Uh, in that question, they had asked something like that for you to do the calculation and then comment on it, comment on the answer. So the, the answer is, uh, what is the error it asks? What is the error called? The error is overflow error. And also, you can say that the uh, Given bits, number of bits is not enough to store the answer. When the value in a computer system are stored in two's complement form, this problem has a characteristic behavior. In the following addition, where the where plus 63 is added to plus 63, there is no problem. The answer is correctly obtained as plus 126. That is this. See? Now let's use our shortcut method to calculate the value of this. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 32 plus how much? 1 less than 32, 31. So that will give you 63. This is 63. And this one? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. If all were ones, if this was also 1, 100 and 1, yeah, 64 plus 63 is 127. But since this is not 1, you reduce 1, this is 126. So that's answer is correct. It saves a lot of time to remember those methods. However, if the binary for plus 96 is added to plus 96, the result is as follows. So then 63 and 63, there was no problem. But this one, what happens? This is, is this 96? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 64 plus 32 is 96, yeah. So when you add up all zeros, and here 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, 1 carried, 1 plus 1 is 1, is 1 carried, that will come here. What happens? There is no overflow, no? The overflow means that the answer has a leading 1, which causes a computer system to interpret the answer as a negative number. So here, uh, what happens is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, the 8 bits, nothing lost, but where this should be plus 96, plus 96 is uh, uh, 192, 192, but what does this give? This is negative, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, negative 64 is the answer, so that's all wrong. A similar problem can occur when two negative values are added. For example, the addition of minus 96 to the same value results in the following. So that happens. What happens? Here, the, uh, the overflow that, that this time, this is extra. This time there has been a carry when the most significant bits were added and the result obtained is a positive number. So because of that, the answer became positive. <laughs> so that's also wrong. Clearly, we need the processor to detect overflow and output an error message. There is a discussion of how a processor can detect overflow in Chapter 6. So later on, we'll be learning those. Then the subtraction, again, this is a, like a reminder I've given this. And subtract binary equivalent of denary 11 from the binary equivalent of denary 14. What do you do? is a 14 minus 11. So it should be 3. And it's okay. When you do that thing, normal, nothing happens. But 
subtract the binary equivalent of binary 111 from the binary equivalent of 141. So this is also okay. 141 minus 111 is 30. So is this 30? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. 16 plus um, 8, 24 plus uh, uh, 4, 28 plus 2 is 30. Yeah, that's correct. Then task 1.04 for you. Using a byte to represent each value, carry out the subtraction of denary 35 from denary 67. Using binary arithmetic with two's complement representation. 67 minus 35 equals 32. Normal, our normal denary arithmetic. Here, what do we do? We need to overcome these uh, carries and overflows and all that, right? Whatever the negative number you convert to, two's complement and then add. No, no subtracting. So first of all, 67 plus 67 is this. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 64 plus 3 is 67. Then this is uh, 35. What do you do? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 32 plus 3 is 35. Remember the, the what do you call the one's complement is inversion. No? The opposite of this is written here, then add one. Still, add one is this. So when you add, what happens is you will get this answer. And then this simply this is brought here again to add up. No subtraction, you just add. And then you get this. There is a carry, there is an overflow, but you don't have to worry. Look at this: 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So it's correct, no? Plus 67 minus 35 is plus 32. So that's correct. The other way around, 35 minus 67 is minus 32. See whether that also uh, becomes correct. So here is 35 and here is minus 67. Then we have to invert it. 1, 0, 1, all these digits are uh, inverted. Then you add 1, then you get this number. Get this, right? get this number, and this is 128. Remember? For the negative numbers, this is 128, and all these positive ones, you get minus 32. Right? So that is correct. So you don't have to worry about these uh, carries and overflows and all that, changing the sign and all that. No need to worry if you use. Two's complement. That is why, that is the reason. If you're wondering why this two's complement, what is the use? This is the use of two's complement. Then you have binary coded decimal. Way of coding digit, dig, like digital uh, displays and all that. One nibble for one binary digit. And only nibble is for bits. So, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1 are used. 1010 to 1111 one, one, do not have any meaning. Why is that? Because single digit in denary, you can go only up to 9. So this is it, 0 to 9. And these have no meaning. You won't use those in BCD. Binary coded decimal, storage of a binary value representing one denary digit in a nibble. Storage of a binary value representing one denary digit in a nibble. And tag BCD is when two BCD nibbles are stored in one byte. So take this 8503. It is this. So only one nibble is used. Only one nibble is used. This is blank or this is empty or zero. Then the next one is five. So this is five. This is zero. And the last digit three is this. And the uh, fact is two BCD digits per byte. So in one byte, you put this as well as that. And the other byte, these two nibbles. Examples are calculator screen, the digital displays, and digital time displays. Those are the ones, BCD. And BCD arithmetic, there is a problem. If you add 
0.26 to 0.85 should be 1.11. So how do you represent 0 0.26? 0 0.26. This is one byte for this zero. The whole whole number, integer part, is a decimal number. And uh, 26 is this nibble is two. Remember one nibble for one uh, digit, D that digit, B C D. So and this is six. And 0 0.85, 0. Point, this is eight. This is five. And when you add up, what happens? When you add up, you get this. This table you get one zero, and the value in denary, ten. And this is eleven. As if like it's zero. Or dot one zero one one. But that is wrong. You should get one point one one. And see the correction. How you do the correction? You add. You can read this. I this. This uh, note is uploaded, so you can always read this in a number of times. And did you short? Otherwise, it will be very long. So this is a correction. The correction is zero one one zero. You add it. Then what happens is one is carried. One plus zero is one. One plus one is one zero. One carried one. Uh, plus one is one zero, one carried, one plus one is one zero, one carried, then it goes to the next table. We are not adding it yet. We are adding that one, the next step, plus the correction. So zero, one, one, zero, plus one is this. Then you add up. Again, you get a carry. Where do you keep it? You take it to this one, the next byte. In that case, one plus one point one one. So that is corrected. That is. There is a correction. And now we can stop because this is like a different, different kind of thing. Not much, not many numbers coming into action. So, so after this, you try to master and try to do all the uh, tasks and improve your knowledge. Hope you will enjoy this and do all the do all the uh, homework and improve. See you in the next video. Bye.